Hi, this is Dr. Ken Morlino. In Chapter 8, the focus is on long-term operating assets. There are two types of long-term operating assets, tangible and intangible. The, the purpose of this video is to focus on the accounting for long-term tangible assets or capital assets, specifically plant and equipment, and we'll look at methods of recording depreciation for those two types of assets. So a quick look at a balance sheet, in this case the balance sheet for Procter & Gamble for 2009 and 2008, and the areas highlighted in yellow show the long-term capital assets for Procter & Gamble. We see plant property and equipment, otherwise known as PP&E, and we see the net plant property and equipment, and then below that we see the handling for P&G's intangible assets, goodwill, and trademarks. So what is depreciation? A typical capital asset, say a building or equipment, provides economic benefit over a period of many years. Expensing the full cost of the asset at the time of purchase is not appropriate because of the long-term economic benefits that the asset provides. Therefore, the process of depreciation is used to record the loss of value as an expense. Depreciation is the systematic allocation of a portion of the capital asset cost. Each year, a portion of the total cost of the asset is recorded on the income statement as a depreciation expense. Note that buildings, machinery, and equipment are depreciated. Land, which does not lose economic value, does, is not a depreciable asset. So which capital assets should be capitalized? Well, there are three requirements. One, that the asset must be owned by the firm. It must provide future benefits. And it must be material. What material means is that these expense of the, or the cost of the asset is typically substantial. For example, buildings and computer systems would be capitalized. Okay. Um, office supplies, for example, would typically be expensed, meaning that they may be shown on the balance sheet as a short-term asset, as supplies. But the cost of those supplies are recorded uh, as an expense on the income statement in the period in which they are used. So let's take a look at depreciation and preparing a depreciation schedule. In this part of the video, I'll prepare a depreciation schedule for the example shown in the text, which is the purchase of a truck for $100,000. I'll first depreciate that asset using the straight line method, and then we'll look at the double declining balance method. First, notice the template you are looking at, which is very similar to the exhibits in the, the, the chapter. We see a template here where the years, the useful life of years of the asset, the net book value beginning, all right, so that is the book value of the asset at the beginning of its useful life. We have a column for the yearly depreciation expense. We have a column for accumulated depreciation. And then we have a column for the net book value ending. So that's the basic format that you would use. So in our example, the truck has a total cost to the firm of $100,000. It has a useful life of five years and has a salvage value of 10000 So the first part of the calculation is what is the yearly depreciation expense. So as you can see in the formula, the yearly depreciation expense equals the total cost of the asset less whatever salvage value that asset will provide at the end of its economic life. And then we divide that value by the useful life in years. So we see now that the yearly depreciation expense you recorded for years 1 through 5 is $18,000. So now let's record the first year's depreciation expense. So we enter $18,000 in, in the year 1 row. So now we see that the net book value, beginning of $100,000, less the $18,000 of depreciation expense, so we now have a net book value ending of $82,000 here. So the net book value ending now becomes, or at net book value beginning for the next year. 
So in the next year we start with the value of 82000 We record another $18,000 of depreciation expense to the income statement. The book value ending now is 64000 and then look what happens in accumulated depreciation. In the year one, we accumulate 18,000. In year two, we add another 18,000, so we have an accumulated depreciation value of $36,000. And that process repeats itself. So the accumulated depreciation value is shown on the balance sheet with the yearly depreciation expense brought to the income statement as an expense. So we record each year's depreciation for years four and five and continue the process of recording the, the beginning book value. And notice the boxes in yellow now on our completed schedule. We begin with a book value of 100000 which was the total cost of the asset. And we now we depreciated it over five years down to its salvage value of $10,000. Note that in a depreciation schedule, you cannot depreciate the asset below its salvage value. So the ending net book value at the end of the useful life of the asset should always equal its salvage value. Okay, now let's look at depreciation depreciating the same asset using the double declining balance method. So up here we see the formula. The depreciation factor, which is a percentage, is equal to 2 times the straight line rate, where the straight line rate equals 1 divided by n. For this particular asset, n equals 5 years of economic life. So the percentage then would equal 1 divided by n, or 1 divided by 5, or 20 percent. And since this is the double declining balance, we multiply that factor, 20 percent, by 2, So we see our depreciation factor is 40%. And so we now we enter the 40% in this particular column. The rest of the table is, is the same except for the depreciation factor column. So my first year's depreciation expense now equals the beginning net book value times the first year's depreciation expense, which is 40,000. And therefore, my net book value ending equals the beginning minus the first year's appreciation is 40000 And of course, then my depreciate, accumulated depreciation is the sum of that first year. So I've recorded the first year's depreciation using the double declining balance. Net book value beginning of the second year is now 60000 times the 40%. So we see a second year depreciation expense of 24,000, ending book value of 36,000, and my de de accumulated depreciation equals first year plus the second year. Right. So I filled in, this, filled in the schedule for years three and four. So we see at the beginning of year five we have a book value of 12,960. If I multiply that times the 40 percent factor, notice my ending book value is now $7,776, which is less than the salvage value of $10,000. This cannot be. We cannot depreciate an asset below its its declared salvage value. So for the, the double declining balance method, the last year's depreciation expense has to be that value that gives us an ending value of $10,000. So in this particular case, my last year's depreciation is the difference between the beginning book value and the salvage value. So in for this particular asset, that last year's depreciation is 2,960. And then the total accumulated depreciation then should be $90,000 if we've done this correctly.
which we see that it is. And so here is the completed depreciation schedule using the double declining balance method. Notice the declining yearly depreciation here using this method as opposed to the fixed depreciation expense on the straight line method. Exhibit 8.3 in your textbook compares the two methods, the straight line and double declining method, for this particular asset. You should spend some time looking at this. This is a summary of the uh, two methods that I just illustrated. Uh, in conclusion, and finally a word about intangible assets. The process of systematically allocating the cost of intangible assets, which are things like patents, copyrights, and trademarks. All right, that system is known as amortization. All right, so purchased intangible assets are capitalized and then amortized. The challenge for accountants is determining the market value and lifespan of intangible assets. The text discusses and gives examples of the amortization of intangible assets, including patents, copyrights, trademarks, and goodwill. And this concludes this video for Chapter 8.